as the water gets faster as it circles the drain. In like manner, we look around at this world today. This world is spinning out of control in every direction that you look. Inflation, border control issues, high food prices, high gas prices, murder and evil everywhere you look, and the list goes on and on. We have baby drop-offs at the fire stations if you decide that you don't want your baby anymore. Drop your baby off, no questions asked. So this world is spinning out of control in ways that we would have never believed would be happening today. Yet, brethren, they are happening. And as God's people, the really tough and difficult times are yet to come like we've never seen before. And we, as well, will be going through some of these difficult times. So today, I ask the question, will we be able to endure the difficult times ahead? I want to look at God's Word today and see what we can understand about endurance. Is endurance important in our lives on our Christian journey? If you want a title for today's sermonette, title it, Enduring the End or Just Getting Close. You know, we've heard of the old saying, close only counts in horseshoes, and that is a true saying. But with God, brethren, close is not an option. Just getting close will not get you and I into the kingdom of God. Let us first take a look this afternoon in Matthew chapter 24. Let's see some things that Christ tells us that we will have to endure. I want to begin first in verse 21. Matthew chapter 24, beginning in verse 21. Jesus explained that time this way. For then there will be great tribulation, such as not been since the beginning of the world until this time. No, nor ever shall be. So this indicates that there's a terrible time in our future. Jesus actually told us some of the uh, things that we must endure earlier in the prophecy. Let's look back now, beginning in verse 3. Matthew chapter 24, and beginning in verse 3. And as he was sitting on the Mount of Olives, his disciples came to him alone, saying, Tell us, when will these things be, and what will be the sign of your coming, and of the completion of the age? Verse 4, Then Jesus answered and said to them, Be on guard that no one deceives you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and they shall deceive many. So first, Christ warns us about religious deception. We are given the warning to avoid being deceived by those who teach, who profess Christ's name, but teach doctrines that are contrary to what he taught. Write Revelation 6 and verse 2 in your notes. We're told here this religious deception in the end time will be led by a false prophet who has great political power and becomes a conqueror who tries to influence the world with his false teachings. We're given our warning here. Christians must endure these times ahead. Christians must work hard to not fall victim to this religious power's deception. Jesus warned us to take heed that no one deceive you. So how do we avoid deception? Turn to 2 Thessalonians 2 in verse 10. 2 Thessalonians 2 in verse 10. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in those who are perishing because they did not receive the love of the truth so that they might be saved. We avoid this religious deception by developing a deep knowledge and love of God's truth. Christ said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Are we doing that, brethren? Are we seeking the truth with prayer and Bible study? Are we living by every word of God? Or are we just getting close? Keeping God's commandments is a sure way of loving God's truth and drawing close to Him. As we continue now in verse 6, Matthew 24 and verse 6, And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you do not let these things disturb you. 
For it is necessary that all these things take place, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in different places. So the next sign that Christ warns of is wars and rumors of wars. Warfare will be constant and prevalent factor in mankind's future, which will end the lives of millions. We see that in Revelation 6. In verse 4, these wars will range from conflicts against other nations to civil wars as countries tear themselves apart. Then because of the wars, there will be famines, pestilences. Famines will strike the earth, causing food to be scarce and prices to skyrocket to an extent never before seen. And we are beginning to see some of these things happening slowly today. And amid the malnutrition, warfare, disease will run rampant. Epidemics and pandemics will spread across the globe. Earthquakes will also strike. And as always, mankind will be totally helpless, only able to clean up the wreckage in the aftermath. Sounds bad, right, doesn't it, brethren? But in verse 8, chapter 24 of Matthew Christ declared, this is only the beginning of sorrows. With the religious deception, warfare, famine, pestilence, natural disasters striking all over the world, people will turn against God. People will turn against the people of God. In their anger and confusion, mankind will lash out against anyone trying to live God's way. Neighbors and family will betray one another. And in this era of lawlessness, people will lose love for one another. We see this happening more today. Knowing that his time is almost up, Satan will attack God's people with everything that he has. Revelation 12, verse 12. Some of God's people will be killed for following God. We see that in Revelation 6, verse 9 and 10. We see here that this time will be very difficult. Will we, brethren, be able to endure to the end, no matter how difficult it is? And is it worth it? A question that we must ask is whether or not this way of life is worth it. Christ tells us that we are to count the cost, engage whether we value his way of life far more than the trials that will come. Go back and read Luke chapter 14, verses 26 through 33. Christ tells us here what we must do to be one of his disciples. So how much we love and value God's truth will determine whether or not we stay faithful and endure to the very end. So what is endurance? Endurance is the power of going on in spite of difficulties. Endurance means getting through the trial without compromising or wavering. We don't cut corners. We don't take the wide path. We stay on the narrow path and we keep moving forward. So endurance means rightly handling God's word. God's word is our wisdom being ready for every good work. And as we've heard recently, it's not the world's wisdom. It's God's wisdom that we look forward to having in our lives and moving us forward. You know, Satan is the god of this world, and he loves discouragement. Discouragement is strong. Discouragement is one of Satan's favorite ways to bring God's people down. If the enemy can convince us that something is impossible, then, brethren, he wins. If we've tried something a hundred times and it failed, try a hundred and one. Giving up entirely is the only way to fail. Turn now to Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. And let's begin in verse 3. Paul expressed that endurance is important in character development. It helps us to develop our character. And that's what God is looking for. Romans 5 beginning in verse 3. We're told here, not only this, but we also boast in tribulations, realizing that tribulation brings forth 
endurance. Verse 4, and endurance brings forth character, and character brings forth hope. And the hope of God never makes us ashamed because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, which has been given to us. So we've been given God's Spirit to help us. But remember that God is in in charge of our lives. His desire is for us to grow in the likeness of His Son. So whatever enters our life, unfavorable circumstances, tragic events, or yes, even irritating people, it's all to develop our character. Be good or bad or indifferent, our response to life's irritants forms our character. The oyster and its pearl provide a beautiful picture of a positive response to life's irritants. The pearl is a product of pain. An alien substance, a grain of sand, slips inside the oyster's shell. On the entry of that foreign irritant, all the resources within the tiny, sensitive oyster rush to the spot and begin to release healing fluids that otherwise would have remained dormant. And eventually the irritant is covered and the wound healed by a pearl. No other gem has so fascinating a history. It is a symbol of, of stress. The precious tiny jewel is conceived through irritation born of adversity. Had there been no wounding, no irritating interruption, there could have been no pearl. Remember, God doesn't call the equipped. He equips the call, and he'll always be there to love, to guide each one of us to great things. So the story of the pearl tells us no great thing is achieved without suffering, and after suffering comes new life. Turn now to James chapter 1, beginning in verse 2. We all know the trials and difficulties in this life, and that we will have to endure. And the things that we have to endure cannot be compared to what God has in store for us. We can never forget that, brethren. So James 1, beginning in verse 2, Consider it all joy, my brethren, when you are beset by various trials. Why do we rejoice when we go through difficult things in our life? Because James 1, verse 3, Because knowing that the testing of our faith produces endurance, but let endurance have its perfect work, so that we may be perfect and complete, not lacking anything. This trial that we go through is a testing process that God is allowing us to go through. Now I know you have endured to the end, just as God tested Abraham. Colossians 3, beginning in verse 23. We all have to put forth an effort. It's not easy sometimes, brethren, going through the difficult things that we go through. But we can be encouraged. Colossians 3 and verse 23 says, And whatever you do, do heartedly as to the Lord and not to men. Work at it with all your heart. This verse is a beautiful reminder of why we are working toward our goals. We will always be disappointed if we are only working to win other people's attention, other people's admiration and approval. Putting our heart into our work, it makes it personal. It makes it much more fulfilling. It's not just the checks on our to-do list. It's about growing closer to God as we serve Him in all that we do and we put our heart in it. You can read story after story in the Bible of examples of people who faced impossible, difficult situations and yet they still made the choice to keep moving forward in faith without knowing what the outcome would be. Job Read Job and some of the difficult situations that he went through. Paul was imprisoned over and over again, beaten, shipwrecked, yet he still chose to praise God and continue his work. There's so many more, brethren, that we can read and learn from. David, Jacob, Abraham, Jeremiah, Ruth, and others. 
But Jesus himself is the ultimate display of perseverance unto death. He was born and he lived a sinless life and he taught us how to live by his example. He persevered and gave his life for all mankind and offered the most perfect example of endurance as he finished the race of life perfectly. You know, sometimes when we feel like quitting, inspiration can be found by the examples of the people mentioned here in the Bible. They endured in faith, clinging to hope every step of the way. And we can do the same, brethren. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1. Sometimes, brethren, we do need encouragement. Hebrews 12 and verse 1. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great throng of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily entraps us. And let us run the race set before us with endurance. And endurance, brethren, is what it takes. We must endure this same race. And understand, this race is not a marathon. It's not, it is a marathon. It's not a hundred yard dash that we finish. This race requires daily discipline and perseverance. One of the first questions I ask myself when I feel like I can't do anymore is when I can't, I feel like I can't run anymore. I ask myself, what is the biggest thing standing in my way? And that simple question usually uncovers an answer that I can work with. I can make a decision to change when I find out what is holding me back. And sometimes just asking the question alone is a powerful thing because it gets our mind to thinking. So what's making us want to give up? We have to keep our eyes on the lookout where sin might have crept in. The enemy is a master of using sin to discourage, disappoint, and destroy us. And that's what Satan is trying to do. Turn now to Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13. We all know that Satan is the god of this world, and he wants to stop God's plan. So where does Satan attack God's people? We can be encouraged, Philippians 4, verse 13. I can do all things through Christ who empowers me. We have a helper to help us get through whatever comes before us. And when we face difficult things in our life, we always have a choice. And God wants to see how we make that choice. Sure, we have the option of giving up, or we can choose to grow. And when we choose to keep going through the tough stuff, our character changes. We become stronger, more steadfast. We become more confident and, and full of hope. So endurance doesn't just change the end result we're working toward. It changes who we are in the best kinds of ways. Turn now to Deuteronomy chapter 31 and verse 8. Never forget we always have someone to turn to. We have someone that will be fighting for us. Deuteronomy 31 and verse 8. We're not alone doing this, but sometimes we do get the feeling that we are alone. Verse 8, And the Lord is, is he who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not fail you nor forsake you. Do not fear. Do not be dismayed. One of the lies we often believe when we feel stuck in whatever we're alone in is nobody else understands how hard it is. Nobody else has been through this situation. Nobody else feels my pain. No one gets it. Have we felt that way before? God promises that he will never leave you or forsake you. So just because we're going through a tough time doesn't mean that he's abandoned us. Call it 2 Corinthians 4, verse 16. 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 16. God is there with us, helping us through. And we're told here in 2 Corinthians 4, verse 16, For this reason, we do not lose heart. But if our outward man is being brought to decay, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. 
All of the outward things we work so hard to achieve. Maybe weight loss goals, better paying job, bigger house. These are all temporary. The things we see are just a tiny fraction of the big picture that God sees. Are we becoming more patient, loving, joyful, peaceful? If we can say yes, then we are on the right track. Those are fruits of the Spirit that show us that we are becoming more like Christ. It tells us that we are enduring and that we are growing. And as I mentioned earlier, perseverance changes our character. It's not just about crossing the finish line. It's about who we are when we do. Psalm 37 and verse 24. Psalm 37 and verse 24. Some people think that they have to do everything perfect. But we are in the process of becoming perfect. Psalm 37 and verse 24 says, Though he fall, he shall not utterly cast down, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. You know, it's okay to mess up along the way. We do fall short. Endurance isn't about knowing with certainty that each step you take is the right one now. Brethren, be turning to Colossians 1, beginning in verse 9. We have to continually lean on God for help because we can't do these things of and by ourselves. I want to read this passage in this way. Colossians 1, beginning in verse 9. We continually ask God to fill us with the knowledge of His will through all the wisdom and understanding that His Spirit gives, so that we may live a life worthy of the Lord and please Him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to His glorious might, so that we may have great endurance and patience. So, brethren, is endurance important in our Christian journey? Let's look at Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 36. Hebrews 10 and verse 36. We read here, For you need to have endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. So let's read that verse again, brethren. Hebrews 10, verse 36, For you need to have endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. We have to endure to finish the race, which is God's will for us. Then we will receive the promise that He has for us. So what is that goal? What is that promise? James chapter 1 and verse 12. James chapter 1 and verse 12 says, Blessed is the man who endures trials because after he has been proved, he shall receive a crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. We keep his commandments because we love him. Then we will reign with God in Christ forever. And those that love him are obeying God in all that they do with all of their heart, mind, and soul. These are the ones that I've endured to the end. These are the ones that I've finished the race. Endurance is a very important part of our spiritual growth. Not only does it help us to develop patience, but also understanding what God requires of our actions to also reflect His words completely in our life, no matter what the trial is. Throughout our lives, Going through trials and tests is one of the key factors that will help us to draw closer to God. I hope and pray that we can all say the words of Paul in 2 Timothy 4 and verse 7. 2 Timothy 4 and verse 7. Paul said, I have fought a good fight. I finished the course. I kept the faith. Brother Paul said he fought a good fight. It wasn't easy, and we have to fight that fight as well. This means staying close to God in prayer, Bible study, meditating, and seeking God's Word. 
Brethren, if we can say the same words as the Apostle Paul, we will meet at the finish line, God's glorious kingdom that is soon to come, that will last forever. Brethren, have a good rest of the Sabbath, and thank you for allowing me to spend this time with you today. Thank you.